Hello ladies and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about 10 wardrobe staples, 10 essential items that in my view every woman should have in her closet. In 1998 at 70th Academy Awards, Sharon Stone's outfit made fashion history. The famous actress showed up wearing very elegant satin skirt from Vera Wong and this very basic piece of a wardrobe that she actually borrowed from her husband. Have you figured out what wardrobe staple I'm talking about? Indeed, ladies, I'm talking about very basic white shirt. White shirt is the most versatile item in our wardrobes. Can you imagine there are more than 30 ways how you can style basic white shirt? A white shirt can be worn standalone, or you can wear it over a tee or a top or you can wear it under the blazer or under the vest to create layering. If you are looking for a good white shirt that will become a great investment to your wardrobe, it's good to remember about two things. So first, the cut and the fit. A good basic shirt will be either straight or maybe a bit oversized. What's important is that there is some room between your body and the fabric of the shirt. In this case, you will be able to put something underneath, like a turtleneck or a top, for instance. The only thing is that the shirt should not be very fitted, because then it won't be as versatile. Second thing to take into account is the fabrics. Opt for thick fabrics. In this case, it will look more expensive and won't crease easily. Ladies, the length of the shirt can be different. Some women prefer long shirts, up to knee level. In this case, they will be able to wear it as a dress. I personally prefer the standard length, um, up to roughly hip level. I find it more convenient when you try to tuck it in. It's long enough so that you can wear it as an extra layer, but it's not too long, so you can tuck it in fairly easily. If you're struggling to find good white shirt, try to check out the men's sections of the brands. They often have very good shirts that are either straight or oversized, and as well as very good colors and fabrics. Ladies, more on how to choose a good shirt, as well as quite a few styling tips and hacks, you can find on my Instagram account. The link is below. What will work the best with a white shirt? Indeed, very simple, straight like blue jeans. The jeans can be high-waisted or medium-waisted. It's really a matter of preference. So my jeans are actually from Zara. I bought them three, four years ago and I bought them actually at 20 quid and I think this is the best investment ever because they are super versatile and the quality is actually quite good as well. You can find something similar in stores today. They literally sell them everywhere. Just note the model. This model normally will be the most versatile. Straight leg jeans will always look more chic, more um, classy than other options, in particular skinny jeans. There are many ways how you can style straight, straight leg jeans. You can style it in a more casual manner or in a more smart option for going out if you add um, a top or a blazer and heels. And remember, ladies, options like cargo jeans or jeans with low waistline are very short trends. They won't last long and they will be out of style fairly soon. So if you are looking for wardrobe staples, I wouldn't recommend buying them. One other thing that comes to mind when we talk about jeans is a t-shirt. T-shirt is something that we think of as a part of summer wardrobe, but in fact, t-shirt can be styled all year round. You can style t-shirt during winter under the blazer or under the jumper and actually it will add a bit of a twist to the look. If you are choosing a t-shirt and you want it to be very versatile and to become a good investment in your wardrobe and to be very functional, just bear in mind a couple of things. First one is the fabrics, make sure it's fairly thick. And second is the fit. The most standard and most versatile option will be a straight t-shirt not tailored, just straight, maybe a bit oversized, but I would just go for plain straight one. In terms of colors and prints, it's really a matter of preference. It depends on what color your wardrobe is and what color you wear more often and what colors you like. I always recommend my clients to have at least one white t-shirt, just because it's probably the most versatile um, the item after the white shirt. And you can wear it casually or even under the blazer to work. The t-shirt that I'm currently showing is a great example of good, basic, versatile white 
t-shirt it has very thick fabrics very good quality i actually bought it at the men's section <laughs> of the brand one other item that i personally cannot imagine my wardrobe without is uh, a blazer as some of you know ladies i am a big blazer fan that's because the blazers are so versatile and if chosen right they can be styled with pretty much everything starting to very smart styling when you go to work or go out to more casual styling when you go for brunch with friends for instance or even to a sporty styling when you wear your blazer with a biker shorts and trainers you can choose a blazer in semi-fitted style or straight one or even oversized it's really a matter of preference and all these blazers will be very versatile and could be styled in many different ways as long as they are not dated so ladies the models that i'm currently showing they are dated and they won't look good and unfortunately they won't be versatile at all ladies the blazer i'm currently showing is um, a blazer from massimo dutti so the good thing about this blazer that this is wool blend so it's quite warm which is amazing for winter to be honest and also because it has some wool the quality is quite good it's not plain i've chosen the check print and you can see it has a bit of a purple color as well which i like in particular because i like how it looks with gray i often hear from some women that they miss times when very tailored and very fitted items were popular so the good thing ladies that these times are coming back but the tailored blazers today look a bit different from how they looked 15 years ago so as you can see the main difference is length so tailored blazers today are actually very popular but they are longer than they used to be back in early 2000s in one of my recent videos i talk in detail about how to choose a good blazer and what things to take into account if you haven't watched this video check it out the link is here if you're looking for a good alternative to blazer you can think about one other wardrobe staple a jumper or a sweater when choosing a jumper make sure that the fabrics and the knit is fairly thick it doesn't crease easily you can do a wrinkle test this is something that i talked um, about in one of my recent videos you can check it out if you're looking for a good jumper that will keep you warm the choice of fabrics is really important I personally recommend going for cashmere, either pure or blend, or wool blend. Ladies, I don't recommend go for pure wool. It can be very rough for the skin and it's not really comfortable when you wear it. The neck is a matter of preference. I personally love having a bit of a neck and sometimes even roll neck, just because it keeps us warm in winter and uh, I don't need a scarf. Or you can go for a jumper without a neck, it's also fine. One other way to style a jumper is as a scarf. This is actually very convenient because you don't have to carry it separately and you can also put it on if it becomes quite cold. Straight trousers are next on my list and frankly ladies, they can be a great alternative to jeans but just something that will look smarter and more chic. The great benefit of having one pair of straight trousers in your wardrobe is how versatile they can be they literally can work with everything from heels to flats and trainers and ladies you don't need to buy a separate pair of trousers to wear to the office just one pair of straight trousers will be good you can just style them up wearing heels or pointy ballerinas or you can style them in a more relaxed way for instance with the trainers or loafers trousers are also great when you style them for going out you can combine them with a satin shirt for instance or a symmetric top to create more evening look ladies models that i'm currently showing won't be versatile at all these models are dated and you can create maybe a couple of looks with them but they won't be as versatile as straight trousers just bear it in mind the next item on my list is a satin skirt and very often we don't really think about satin skirts as about staple we think about it more as a, something that can be worn purely as part of a feminine style for instance to work with a blazer but the truth is that if the skirt is chosen right it can be very versatile and it can be styled in many ways including styling casual with trainers for instance or chunky boots i think the main problem that women have when they think about wearing potentially a satin skirt is that they crease easily 
and uh, it is actually true so you can either just accept it and uh, just ignore it or when you choose a skirt you can take a couple of points into account so first of all you can choose a fabrics that is very good and uh, very um, thick it means that it will crease less than other satin skirts or alternatively you can just go for darker colors like for instance deep navy or black the wrinkles will be less visible one other important point about satin skirt is the fit so ideally it should be either straight or slightly a line like i'm currently showing one other point uh, about choosing the satin skirt is the length ideally it should be around mid cuff knee length satin skirts are dated the models like i'm currently showing when we talk about wardrobe staples or closet essentials it's really important not to ignore accessorize if you don't complete your look with accessorize your look will always be slightly unfinished so the next item on my list is cross body bag and this is something that in my view every woman should have in her wardrobe good cross body bag has a well-defined shape like i'm currently showing so typically it's simple it doesn't have any embellishment or any decoration the simpler actually is the better the color can be different so i am showing you the black one just because it works quite well for my wardrobe. I also have a couple of bags in lighter colors, but when you choose a color, just make sure that it works for your wardrobe. It doesn't have to be black or beige, it's just whatever works better for you. When choosing crossbody bag, make sure that the strap is removable. In this case, you will be able to change the strap like I did. So originally this furler bag had a chain strap, which I didn't really like at all. I didn't find it really versatile, but I really love the bag. So what I did, I basically replaced the original chain with the strap that I bought separately. And this strap can be used for other bags as well. I will show you now. This is one more crossbody bag. I actually bought it at Zara and I will show you now how different this bag can look like if you just change the strap. So here we go ladies, I have changed the strap and uh, the bag looks different and um, more interesting now. And also because this strap is longer, it's actually more convenient to wear it. Does a crossbody bag have to be made of a genuine leather? It's a good question ladies and the answer is no. The quality of faux leather improved quite materially within the last 5-7 years. So today it's fairly easy to find a good faux leather bag that will work for many years to come, will be very durable and uh, very versatile. Uh, Crossbody bag doesn't have to be expensive and it doesn't have to be from luxury brands. Well, unless you want to, obviously. What matters when you choose a crossbody bag is its shape. As long as the shape is right, crossbody bag will look good and will elevate your style. The models like I'm currently showing are dated. They won't look good. And unfortunately, instead of elevating the style, they can ruin even the best look. One more thing that often gets forgotten is the belt. The belt helps to add more structure to the look and help us look a bit more put together. The ideal belt is between one and three inches wide. It can be any color really, depending on your wardrobe. The safest option probably will be black, but again, if you have a colorful wardrobe, you can go for a colorful. The simpler the buckle, the easiest it will be to style the belt, and the more long lasting and the more versatile it will be. So in my personal view, square or rectangular buckles will be the best but if you like round shapes or oval it's completely fine the examples that i'm currently showing are not the best options it's going to be really hard to style them they are very sophisticated some of them are in boho style and the truth is that they won't elevate the look ladies a belt doesn't have to be expensive and it doesn't have to come from a luxury brand what will matter for the belt is uh, the shape of the buckle as i mentioned and how wide it is so my belt is coming from asus i actually bought it four or five years ago it has been very versatile it's a bit more than two inches wide it has very simple buckle it goes pretty much with everything it works for my body shape as well which is frankly amazing i think it was really good investment you can consider buying some more expensive options and you can consider buying something of genuine leather this is completely fine just make sure that the way how it looks is as simple as possible. In this case, it will be very versatile. And last but definitely not least is the trench coat. 
Trench coat is a very classy piece of outwear that can also be very versatile if chosen right. Not many people think of it that way, but trench coat can be a good alternative to a regular coat if you put a blazer or a jumper underneath. So how to make sure that the trench coat will become a good investment and it will become a, a good and versatile piece? So first of all, the fit. Uh, the fit should be straight. It can be a bit tailored, but it shouldn't be too fitted. And second point is the length. The ideal length of the trench coat is around mid-cuff. It can be a bit longer than that, it can be a bit higher than that, but it definitely should be below the knee line. The trench coats that I'm currently showing are above knee line, as you can see, and this is something that was trendy a couple of years ago, but it's not trending anymore. The thing with this coat that they have a limited functionality, just because you can style them with trousers and jeans easily, but it's going to be very hard to style them with skirts, for instance, or dresses. One more thing to note is the neckline. The more versatile option will be a V neckline, like I'm currently showing. And the options with a round neck, they typically will have um, more limited functionality and they won't be as versatile. The trench coat I'm currently showing is a great example of good coat, although it was fairly cheap, but this piece is actually quite good in terms of fabric and quality. But also note the feet and note the lens. This is how the good trench coat looks like. So I bought mine at Stradivarius, but nowadays you can buy a good trench coat at pretty much every brand. Ladies, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Drop me a quick comment if you did. And don't forget to like this video, subscribe and turn on notifications.